Ladies and gentlemen, the Subnautica development team just released their newest update, the Prawn update. Which means the exosuit, also known as the Prawn suit, is now live on the actual client. You no longer have to go into experimental mode or use cheats to get it. You can get it now on the actual client. All you have to do is update your game. And I'm going to show you exactly how you do. But as you can see, the Aurora hasn't exploded yet. I just learned the game. So the first thing you want to do is prepare for an expedition. The things you need are the following. A radiation suit. Know that the Aurora is very radiated, especially after it explodes. You should know this. If you don't, now you do. But you'll need a radiation suit and you can get this pretty easily. Just get some fiber mesh that's made out of the creep one, I believe, and some lead which spawns naturally around the safe shallows, which is the starting area. The second thing you're gonna need is a welder. You have to weld some doors in order to get them to uh, open. So you need a welder. And it's pretty easy to make, you need some magnesium, some crest and some titanium. Now last time I checked, magnesium was actually made from salt. Let's see if it's still here somewhere. Uh, magnesium, yeah, made from salt deposits, you can find those in the safe shallows. The crest fish powder is found in the bases of the crest fish thing things. Those are the red fish that spawn almost like a plant thing. They swim out and explode, once they've exploded, whether they damage you or not, you can go down and find some crest fish powder, you just need one. And some titanium, pretty easy to get. Now the third thing you need is a laser cutter. This isn't by default in your crafting database. I just spawned in a diamond for myself so I can actually see. But you need a diamond, which can be found either pretty deep down or on the side of the island biome. Not the floating island, but the actual island biome. The mountains, I believe they're called, because that's what they are. You can find it there. Beware the reaper, but shouldn't be too hard to get. You just need to get out there. I suggest having a seamoth before going there. Uh, to the island and the aurora, it's not necessary, but I suggest having it. It's also good to have a propulsion cannon if you manage to find one, but once again, it's not necessary. Now, before we leave, we actually need something else, and that's the scanner. This goes without saying, you need it to get most of the other stuff to actually get to the place. But, I'm saying anyway, you need a scanner because you need to be able to scan the fragments, and you need to grab the fire extinguisher that is on the floor or you get in your hands once you spawn in. So yeah, these are the things you need. Let's get to the Aurora. Now, we've got a Seamoth. The Aurora has exploded. And now we can actually head out and start scanning the fragments for the Exosuit. Or the Prawn Suit, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call the Exosuit, I prefer that name. Another thing you need is the Mobile Vehicle Bay. You can find the fragments around the Kelp Forest and Safe Shallows. It's not very hard to get. You should probably have it by the time the Aurora explodes. But you do need it, and you need a lot of materials in order to actually craft the exosuit, but I'll get into that once we actually have found the fragments. Now here we are on the side of the Aurora, and um, we do have a couple of problems here. First thing being that thing over there. But yeah, he shouldn't be too hard to deal with, just swim past him, don't let him get you, stay your distance. He, he's not that dangerous, he's big and makes a lot of noise, but that's pretty much all he does. If he comes swimming for you, I suggest trying to make an evasive maneuver, swim under him or anything like that. It would appear they have also updated the side of the Explorer Aurora. You can no longer actually go in through the floor into the reactor room as you once could. But you now actually have to get in through the front and that's pretty easy to do. There are some Reapers down there, as you can see, but they don't seem to come up here, so you should be safe. Now, once you get in, there's actually two entrances in the front. One which need a propulsion cannon, that's the door there, you can see it's blocked off, you can't just lift it away. And the other one which is this one where you simply just walk in. Now if you don't want spoilers for how the Aurora, the new Aurora looks inside, I suggest you just click on the annotation in the video now and it will take you to after we actually got the fragments. You won't miss them once you get in here, they're pretty easy to find. So yeah, if you don't want any spoilers for how it looks inside and want to explore it yourself, click the annotation, if not then Continue watching the video, and we'll get into how you actually get it once inside. So here we are, almost inside the Aurora. There's plenty of loot boxes on the way. These contains water, food, uh, these nutrient boxes they're called, which is a huge food source. They can contain signals, power source, batteries, medical kits, stuff like that. There's a battery right there. Oh, do watch out for cave crawlers. They bite. And do watch out for falling fire. That hurts too. On your way in, remember to pick up the extra fire extinguisher, you're gonna need it. Okay, so now we are halfway into the Aurora, 
and you actually need to pick up these PDAs here. And these are gonna give you some information and some codes. There are doors with codes locked, so you need those to actually get through. There's a room here, you need the fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire. You can also run through if you're feeling brave enough. Remember that fire extinguishers aren't rare and you can actually craft them yourself. Also a lot of cool stuff in here, including posters, you can take that too if you want. So here you actually have to jump over these things, which is pretty much easy. You can sprint holding your shift key, that you can in most other games. And you're gonna approach a door here with a code, and I believe the code is actually in the PDA you picked up in the other room, the office there. That's the 1455. You can also just use this code, it doesn't change, it's not random. You don't have to actually go in there if you just feel like being lazy. And yeah, it doesn't, you don't have to have the PDA in order to open a door, so you can just do like that. So run down, make your way through the Aurora, and turn left towards this door here. Now you can see we have to weld it open, or cut it open. So let me just do that real quick and I'll catch you back afterwards. Open sesame, there we go. Door is now open. Remember to take air every now and then. Pick up as many of these PDAs as possible, because they do contain codes for some of the rooms and you're gonna need it. You don't need any more codes in order to actually get the exosuit, however it's still nice to have them if you want to explore the rest of the Aurora. So weld this door, you do have to, if you haven't had your weld out before, you do have to actually inspect it first for some reason. And you come into this room and this is where the exosuit fragments are, you can see the burning exosuits there. And this is where the extinguisher comes into play, so extinguish them, more or less, and you should be able to scan them, just pick out your scanner and start scanning. As you can see here, it is now more or less extinguished, and we can start scanning it. And then it's 25%. You should be able to get all the progress in here. So you don't need to worry about having to go out. There are other places where you can find exosuit fragments, but you don't need to worry about that. And while you're here, take the Seamoth module. I believe it's random what it is. Sometimes it's a, a sonar, sometimes it's a storage module. It does change, it appears. So yeah, scan the fragments, and you should have the exosuit in no time. Now once you scan the three over there, you might be wondering, where is the last fragment? It's pretty simple. It's right here in the ceiling, so scan this one, and you're gonna have yourself an exosuit. Fragment scanned, exosuit unlocked. Now it will appear in your blueprints once we find it. There it is. The exosuit walks on the ocean floor. So these are the things you need. Aluminum oxide crystals, plastic ingot, uranium and lubricant. Lubricant is made from the... C clusters from the creep wine. Uranium is made from free uranite crystals. As you can see, it's right there. Uranite crystal. The plastic ingot, that is 10 titanium to make a titanium ingot. And then you use a titanium ingot. That's one of these. To make a plastic ingot, if I can find it in here. I cannot because apparently it's not here. Anyway, once you get some, uh, some titanium, uh, you need 20 in total. And you need some lithium. So 2 lithium and 20 titanium will make the plastic ingots. And the oxide crystals are found on the side of cliffs near the deeper end of the map. However, you don't actually need to go that deep. They exist pretty far up. So let's get back to our base and start building one. Okay, so now we have all the materials we need in order to build our exosuit. They are in my inventory as you can see here. 2 plastic ingot, 2 uranium, 2 aluminum oxide crystals and 2 lubricant. So let's climb and start building this thing. And here it is, being built rather high up actually. For the second this is gonna be gone, I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do to it, and what you can customize it with and upgrade it with. Here we are, the prawn suit, aka the exosuit. It has two arms, and it has six upgrade slots. So let's go on for a second, and access the upgrades. You can see two arm upgrades, these are the right and the left arm, and four upgrade slots in general. And I'm going to show you exactly what you can upgrade it with. Here we are with the moon pool. Let's start upgrading our excellent suit and customizing it. Because you can color and rename it as you please. But first off, let's build the vehicle modification station. This is one to use for the CMOF 2. And as you can see here, prawn suit ducked. We can now customize it as we please. Change the color, whatever we want. You can see it's changing color. Let's just make it black and white and all black and red, whatever. And call it the... Exo suit because that's the real name for it. But these are the upgrades you can make for it. We have the common modules, which is the pressure compensator, hull reinforcement, power efficiency module, and the storage module. 
Now, the uh, exosuit already comes with a storage module, a 4x4 I believe it is, which is sticking on the back. So you can see here we open the storage, it's actually 6x2. But yeah, it already has a storage module. And you can install another 4x4, which will obviously make it larger. These are the exosuit upgrades as the prawn suit thermal reactor. This means if there's a hot enough area, like the lava biome or the smokers in the Grand Reef, it will get energy back. It's kind of like the Seamoth uh, solar panel, just with thermal energy instead. Then there's the prawn suit jump jet upgrade. You're gonna need this in order to actually jump higher since the prawn suit does come equipped with an actual jump upgrade. Oh, it does come equipped with a jetpack, kinda. Then there's the arms. There's the propulsion cannon. There's the grappling arm. There's the uh, prawn suit drill arm, which I have a whole video on. I'll link that in the description. And there's the exosuit torpedo arm, which does exactly what it sounds like. It's an exosuit torpedo arm. Well, for now, let's start installing some upgrades, and let's go play with this thing. So I've gone with the propulsion cannon and the... Oh, module's still kind of back. I've gone with the propulsion cannon and the grappling hook, for this very reason. Whee! Can actually go pretty fast with this thing. But yeah, the grappling hook is pretty good if you're deep down and you run out of boost. Note that this thing doesn't swim like the sea moth would do. It just falls, kind of, since it walks on the seafloor. But yeah, propulsion cannon, pick stuff up, shoot it as a, away in the water, pick stuff up, shoot it at the stalker. Pick the stalker up, you can't pick the stalker up. Oh well. Now, the drill arm, as I said, I have a video on it. It's basically used to farm materials in a, an abundant amount. If you don't have anything in your arm slot, you can pick stuff up. I suggest that if you equip the drill arm, don't have anything in your other arm, so you don't have to leave this thing. Now the jump upgrades, they're gonna help a lot, that we can actually fly. You don't, you can't fly out the water, or you can't get out the water, but once you get up above the surface, you don't fly, you just kind of fall. Like my frame rate. But yeah, that is pretty much all you can do with the exosuit so far. This thing is gonna be used to explore the hotter and deeper areas, as if you were, uh, as the United Lava Zone, because it can, by the uh, sta default, go down to 900 meters. And you can upgrade it to go down to 1500, which is basically the deepest place in the game, is 1400 I believe. So yeah, this thing can go pretty deep. You can also dug it in the Cyclops, and you can sit around with it like you would with Seema. But yeah, that is basically the new prone suit, exosuit, and how you get it. For now, my name's been Jack. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.